Hey chemistry students, so this video is a little tutorial for how to do graphs uh, just to make sure you remember. Not sure when the last time was you might have done one. Um, so you actually have a guidelines in the guideline folder on Schoology um, called graphing guidelines. Um, so if you would have, if you have not already done so, please make sure you print those out so you can keep a track of what it is you're supposed to be doing. Um, so in science, graphing uh, is designed to show the relationship between two variables. So what we typically do in a graph is make what's called a scatter plot. Um, so you've got a bunch of data and you have on the x-axis you put your independent variable. On the y-axis you put your dependent variable. Um, the title is always going to be um, y versus x, so it's always going to be the dependent versus the independent in your title. Um, you want to make sure that your axes are evenly graduated, so if every line is 5 or every line is 2 or whatever it is, as long as it's the same all the way across, that's all that matters. So you could have, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so forth. Up this side, you could have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Doesn't have to be the same on both axes, but you need to have the same uh, graduation on the entire axis. Um, so you've got this data and you plot this data. Some of the stuff you want to be careful of. Oh, first and foremost, I forgot, you need to use graph paper. So this is obviously not graph paper. You don't want to do graph on regular paper. You want to make sure you put it on notebook paper so you have all those lines uh, on the graph paper to use. Um, but again, I'm just doing it as a demo, so I'm not going to try and pull any data off of it. One thing you do want to do is try and make the graph as big as possible. So you wouldn't, if this was your entire paper, you wouldn't want the graph to take up this much space. You would want the graph to be this big, okay? You would want the graph to be that big, but you can't really see it if I do that. So the reason that you want the graph to be as big as possible is because you want to be able to pull data off of it. The bigger the graph is, the more easily you're going to be able to pull data off. Because right now, this little distance is 5. What if I have values in here? How do I predict what that is? If I have 5 here and 10 here, it's a lot easier to figure out what that value is. So you always want to make your graphs as big as possible on graph paper. Label the axis, um, independent on the uh, x, dependent on the y. Um, and then when you draw your data points, this is what you want to be careful of. Don't put a data point like this on your graph, because if you think about it, that's covering a ton of pieces of information. That's going at least from four, if not three, up to like six or seven. So you don't want to make what I always say is make dots, not spots. Okay, don't draw it in like a big spot. You want a little dot. Okay, so if this is your data, you've graphed your data, those are the little pieces of data. You want them so small that what you have to do is actually circle them to allow someone to see where they're at. So you want to circle your data points, and <clears throat> then you want to draw a best fit line. So a best fit line is supposed to be an average. It's supposed to show you uh, the relationship between those two variables. And so the line of best fit should average that. So when you put your ruler down, you want to make sure that you're averaging the data points. There's, if they're not all on the line, there's just as many above as there are below. So something like that is what I want to do. So then I would put my ruler down and I would draw my line. And there's my line of best fit. I have some pieces above, although this isn't perfect. There's more above than there are below. So that's not quite uh, a, a, as good a line as I probably should have. It should be up a little bit more, I think. But that's what you want to draw, do for a best fit line. Um, when you pull data off your graph in order to do something with it, like find the slope, do you want to use actual data points? If I use this data point, am I getting the slope on the line? 
No, I'm getting a completely different slope. So what you want to do is you want to pick two data points that are easy to figure out what those values are that are right on the line. I'm going to pull those values and do the change in y divided by the change in x in order to get my slope. Okay, so don't use real data points because they have error associated with them. They're measurements and so forth. So there's error, there's uncertainty associated with that data. So always, once your best fit line is drawn, anything you do from here on out uses the data actually on the line, not the experimental data that you collected. So um, there's a very quick review of what to do with a graph. Um, you also have those guidelines in front of you. Uh, so next time you need to make a graph, you will be able to do it very efficiently.